One thing I really loved about Wuthering Waves is that each of their characters has its own set of animations and an entirely different type of gameplay strategy that I have never seen in Genshin. I mean, like the difference in the way you play with Jinshin and Danjin is astronomical. And that's just the start. Where Genshin characters' playstyle is very simple and most of the characters, you just have to use their skill and burst and swap out. Or in the case of DPS, you just have to do skill or burst to infuse yourself with element and spam normal or charged attacks. And in the most extreme cases, you find characters like Nouvellette, who makes a little bit of difference with his gameplay. In the grand scheme of things, even Clorin and Arlecchino are the same as every other DPS, gameplay-wise. So it's still nowhere near as different or unique from anyone else. But in Wuthering Waves, you actually have to get to know how to play the character. The way you play Sanhua and the way you play Yuen Wu. Even though they're both DPS characters, the way you play with them is literally night and day difference. This makes every character unique in their own way, regardless of their element or weapon type. And that's why every character you will pull for in Wuthering Waves will enable an entirely new gameplay opportunity for you whether it's a 4-star or a 5-star. But with all that comes some complexities, and because I am dumb, it takes a little time for me to actually understand how a character operates. Alright everyone Maharib is here, and this is my first time creating a video letting you guys know about kit and abilities of an upcoming character in Wuthering Waves. Just to let you guys know that I have seen some videos of her gameplay, and have her kit information that was updated just yesterday. So although the info is pretty updated, but is also subject to change. So my hypothesis will be based on what I read and what I see. I can be a little off the chart, so if you guys see that I made a teeny tiny mistake somewhere in understanding her kit, feel free to correct me in my comments section. And I will keep updating you guys in my Discord as well. So hop in there, and let's start the video. Chongli is a 5-star fusion sword user. As far as I can see in other people's videos, sword users can easily parry the attacks. So I think it's cool, unless you are a skill issue guy like me who can never parry an attack unless he doesn't have Jianxin in the party. You know what? I should stay silent and not expose myself even more. I will try to make her kit sound as easy as possible because man their kits are very difficult to understand just by reading how it's written. Her basic attack performs 4 strikes, and after that, she enters True Sight that lasts for 12 seconds. Now what is True Sight? Well, I mean it is a cool name of her 5th basic attack that deals big PP damage and is considered resonance skill damage as far as I can understand. So within 12 seconds after performing 4 basic attacks, if you perform another basic attack, it will unleash a strong slash. If you use True Sight when Chongli is on ground, she will perform a forward slash known as True Sight Conquest, and if you use it mid-air, she will perform a plunging attack known as True Sight Charge. So just keep that in mind because her entire kit is going to be based on that. Now, if you perform 4 attacks mid-air, she will enter in True Sight, next attack will be either Conquest or Charge depending on when or how you use it. Her heavy attack consumes stamina and deals an upward strike, taking her in air again. Performing basic attacks mid-air after that upward strike will be considered mid-air heavy attacks, and after performing 3 mid-air heavy attacks, she will again enter in true sight for 12 seconds. So it's just that you will enter in true sight after completing your normal combo in any way shape or form. Simple. Her resonance skill deals fast rapid attacks and take her up up in the sky, and enters her in true sight for 12 seconds. After that, she deals a plunging attack with a phoenix known as True Sight Capture that looks so sick. I wanted to show you guys the video, but I don't want my channel to get struck with copyright again. So join my Discord if you want to watch her animations. Now this True Sight Capture plunging attack doesn't end the True Sight she got from her resonant skill. They're completely different from each other. That True Sight will only end after you do another basic attack to perform True Sight Conquest or True Sight Charge, just like after her basic attack combo. I hope that makes sense. Her skill has two initial attempts, kinda like Yolan's C1, and has 12 seconds cooldown. Her resonance liberation is just a nuke of big damage, and gives her 25% more attack for 10 seconds. Thank god I completed one sentence without adding True Sight in it. Oh, now let's come to her Forte Circuit. You know, the bar that you have to fill up before doing something cool with it. In her case, she has to get 4 stacks of Inflamin in her Forte Circuit. When she gets all 4 of these stacks, using her heavy attack will deal flaming sacrifice attack. Basically another big PP damage attack that is considered her elemental skill damage. So how do you get these inflamed stacks? By hitting the enemy with True Sight. Yes, True Sight is everywhere in her kit. No her kit is not true without Sight. I am losing my mind here. I want to know in the comments section how many times did I said True Sight in this video. Anyways, both True Sight Conquest and Charge gives one inflamed stack to her. Meaning using them 4 times will fill this bar, 
and you can use Flaming Sacrifice with the next heavy attack. Otherwise, her Resonance Liberation also fills all four stacks of Inflamin, so you will always be able to use her heavy attack after her Liberation and attack with Flaming Sacrifice. And that is all her kit. As for her passives, first passive increases Chongli's Fusion Damage by 5%, for each Inflamin stack you get from True Sight Charge or Conquest. Second passive, when Chongli releases Flaming Sacrifice or Resonance Liberation, her Fusion Damage bonus is increased by 20% and she ignores 15% of the target's defense when dealing damage. Very powerful. And the third passive. Oh my god. She has a chance to produce special dishes when cooking? Why did they reduce the very strong and powerful character to just a generic waifu? I don't like it one bit. Just kidding. In her intro skill, she appears in mid-air and attack the enemy, and of course, enters in true sight for 12 seconds, and her outro skill increases the switched-in resonator's fusion damage by 20% and their resonance liberation damage by 25%, lasting for 10 seconds. Switching to another resonator ends this effect, so she likes to get paired with another fusion DPS. After processing all this information, what do we learn from it? She is an on-field DPS who uses True Sight to do almost everything, and her flaming sacrifice and True Sight is both considered resonance skill damage. So level her skill up and enjoy. Other than that, I think it's way more fun in practicality than it is in theory. She will be able to consistently gain stacks for Flaming Sacrifice. Her skill also has two initial attempts and gains her True Sight. She is surprisingly consistent in almost every matter. Her animations are amazing, her damage output is great. What else do you want from her? But yes, she is strictly an on-field damage dealer, but at the same time, she also provides 20% fusion damage bonus and 25% resonance liberation damage with her outro skill. So yeah. Pair her with a certain other cute and adorable fusion DPS, and you are good to go. Her base kit is actually very simple to understand and easy to use. Let's see what we have for her resonance chain. Sequence node 1. Resonance skill and heavy attack increases Chongli's damage dealt by 10% and increases her resistance to interruption. Interruption resistance is mostly a pretty big deal, and they added that in her S1. Suspicious. S2. Inflamin increases Chongli's crit damage by 30%, lasting for 8 seconds. Is this as broken as I think it is? I mean, I think it's pretty cracked. Am I missing something? S3. Resonance liberation damage is increased by 80%. That's a lot of damage. S4. Intro skill increases the attack of all team members by 20%, lasting for 30 seconds. A support sequence, I like that. S5. Heavy attack multiplier is increased by 50%. When heavy attack is released, Chongli's attack is increased by an additional 50%. Basically, she deals more damage. Of course. S6. Resonance skill, heavy attack, and resonance liberation ignore an additional 40% of the target's defense when dealing damage. This is OP. Not gonna lie, most of the time when I see a character's constellations, I think they're okay, but are not necessary, and I never recommend getting constellations, sequence nods in this case, but I have to admit, they really do add up a bunch of extra damage if you get them. Meaning, I don't recommend getting these sequences, but S1 or S2, they're not bad if you really want to get them. And that concludes the video. I will talk about her build guide, her echoes, her signature weapon and all that good stuff in my upcoming video because if I start talking about all of that stuff, this video will become too long. I have a lot to talk about in the future. So stay tuned and listen to my lovely wife carefully. Hi, I am Muharib's wife, Layla. My husband would be very happy if you leave a like, share, and subscribe to this channel. Don't forget to join our Discord server and he will see you in the comment section. Peace!